Ooh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and my neighbours, welcome to episode 200 and something of the Spears Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and uh, look, it's a Sunday. I'm recording this on Sunday, pretty unusual for me uh, in recent times, but uh, look, I did, I did fucking four podcasts last week, did like a, uh, and I just was like, you know what? I'm out of things to say. I, I had run out of things. I got to like Friday and I was like, oh, I should do Spearhead Sundays. And I thought, you know, I've run out of words to say. Well, I don't have anything else to add. You know what I mean? Like if you sit down and you talk uh, for like four hours in a week, eventually you're just going to hit the point where where even you go, gee, I say some shit. Gee, I'm just spouting nonsense and bullshit, aren't I? I did fucking... Two episodes of Luke and Lewis. I did uh, some guest episode for some other kind. I can't remember. And then, and then we had Alex Williamson on Luke and Lewis. And then it was time for me to do my podcast. And I thought, you know, I don't think the people want more, and I don't want to say more. But we're here now. And uh, and guys, I uh, just wanted to say uh, this is the only thing that I do actually want to say. <laughs> this episode is that my YouTube's figure is officially out. Lewis Spears YouTube's at YouTube's.com, available for a very limited time only. It does not have very much stock. It's been going absolutely fucking crazy. I've been seeing people buy fucking three of these things, and uh, I just wanted to say that the like your. Uh, wishes that this is going to be worth a million dollars someday. I appreciate it, but you're wrong, okay? Uh, Look, I understand people buying one, totally get it. You want me on your shelf? And that's what you should do. You should buy one. Now, people buying two, I even understand that, okay? Because sometimes people who like toys and shit, they want one to keep in the box because the box is quite cool. And then they want one to put on their shelf and fuck around with. I totally get that. Now, buying three, that's one to, to fuck around with and put on your shelf. That's one to keep in the box, and then that's one to sell on eBay. Now, I would like to put my foot down right now and say, let, I, I want to say firstly, I'm not against resellers, okay? If you can trick some dumb cunt into paying $1,000 for $150 shoes, you, are, you deserve that money, okay? That's a good scam. And uh, I'm all for it, okay? Because uh, all these all these resellers, they get a bad rap. You know, people go, oh, I didn't get my shoe because of these resellers. It's like, look, firstly, you didn't need the shoe, okay? All right? Secondly, that's a small business, all right? So you uh, yelling about resellers, you know, hurting your chances of getting something that you want, you're just shitting on small businesses and entrepreneurs and hustlers, okay? Now, I, as, as someone who follows, follows Gary Vee on TikTok, you know, I'm all about that hustler entrepreneurial mindset. That's what I'm that's what I'm all about, okay? What what this life is about, it's not about being happy. It's not about finding your purpose. It's about buying something for cheap and then selling it for 10 times that price to some rube. Just exploiting some dickhead. That's what life is about, okay? I'm an entrepreneur, hustle life, hashtag get get out and go go get it. Run it up, okay? I wake up at 4 a.m. every morning to take advantage of people who are too dumb to Google and find an alternative product that's cheaper. That's what it's all about, okay? Uh, I've, I've, in, in fact, I'm quitting comedy and I'm starting up a drop shipping uh, scam where what I do is uh, I sell you things that I don't have. And what you do is you buy things from thinking you you uh, get tricked. That's your role in this. I'm going to sell you something that I do not have, and then you're going to buy it from me, and then I'm going to buy it from where you should have gotten it from and then give it to you for literally 30 times the price. That's how you hustle in today's times. That's what being an entrepreneur is all about. Okay, it's not about studying, getting a degree, becoming a doctor, saving lives. Fuck that. It's about scamming people and selling a dog bed for three hundred dollars when it costs you thirty cents. Okay, that's what it's about. It's about one exploiting your customers. Okay, that's the most important step of the entrepreneur mindset. LewisSpearsYouTube.com. One, exploit your customers. Okay. Two exploit your workers who aren't even really your workers, okay? Because the real backbone of the drop shipping entrepreneur hustle life business is 
the child Chinese workers who are getting paid in fumes, okay? Long gone are the days where these cunts were making five cents an hour. Now they get paid in fumes. You might be wondering, what type of fumes, you know? Is it like fume? It's like literally toxic fumes. That's how they get paid. Their only employee benefit is suicide nets. That's all they get. They get fumes and a suicide net. So either they starve to death or they try and kill themselves and I save them and that net bounces them straight back onto the sewing machine. That's that hustle life that I'm talking about, okay? And that's why you need to buy a Lewis Spears U2s. I don't really don't want to associate this with a scam. It's not a scam. It's a good product and the people who make it are lovely. Um, but isn't it, that's what that's what all this all this drop shipping shit's all about, isn't it? You know, just cunts like marking up prices, scamming dickheads. The amount of times I've like seen like a Facebook ad for some uh, product and you go on their store. Here's a red flag for this drop shipping shit. You see a really good ad on Facebook or Instagram, you go, fuck, I need that thing, and then you click on it. And then if, if the only product they sell is that thing, guess what? It's a drop shipping scam. You can find it for half the price. Minimum half. Probably more like a quarter. Because that's what it's all about, isn't it? Huh? It's all about fucking scamming cunts. And guys, uh, wh what else What else am I here to talk about? Uh, oh, yeah. Speaking of, um, of TikTok, guys, uh, TikTok is uh, being banned. And uh, I, for one, would like to celebrate... Firstly, I'd like to celebrate. Uh, secondly, I would like to gloat. Uh, and thirdly, I would like to uh, just uh, wish nothing but sadness for all the TikTok influencers. I hope they all crash and burn uh, because what they did was never good. Uh, it never added anything to society. Really, they're only uh, the only thing that TikTok managed to do was uh, make other cunts mime things they didn't make. You know, it re TikTok really is the death of skills, yeah? Like, with other social media, look, there's a lot of scammy cunts out there. There's a lot of people stealing ideas, but at least they're stealing ideas, you know what I mean? And, and, and making it their own. TikTok was another level. TikTok was literally, oh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip a fucking sketch off YouTube and then I'm going to mouth it. I'm not even going to refilm the idea. I'm just going to mouth it. Some cunts didn't even mouth it. They just ripped a fucking idea off YouTube, took the audio, then they put a fucking song over the top of it and instead of mouthing it and saying and pretending to mime the words, they would instead write the text and the script and the dialogue and then move their mouth as if they were saying it but not actually saying it and then I'd have to fucking read the video. That's adding so many extra steps. Shut it down. So TikTok's getting banned. Trump's banning it. He's saying, we're going to get rid of TikTok. It's Chinese spyware. Now, yes, it is, okay? It's Chinese spyware. Any kind of app that's owned by China, uh, it's like you, there's no such thing as a Chinese business that's separate from the government. It's all one thing. That's how these fucking dictatorships work. I start a business, and then the government goes, oh, nice business. That's mine now. And I go... Hey, no, it's not. I'm, and then they pull out the gun and I go, all right, I guess it's our business. And then the, and then the government goes, no, 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 it's my business. You just work there. And I'm like, all right, I guess I started a business for you. All right. And then you open up an American wing and then you pretend that it's not a fucking Chinese spyware business. But in, in, in the background, you know, like that's the thing. With the American wing of TikTok, how, this is how TikTok works. There's, uh, TikTok is like owned by a bigger Chinese company. Uh, I I think these what is it ten cent or some shit? They also own Fortnite as well, right? Which I guess Fortnite's selling all your data to China. Who knows? Although what the, what the fuck are they going to do with that? Let's be honest, huh? What what are they going to use the Fortnite data for? They can figure out how much how many headshots Ninja can get. And I'm like, all right, well this guy's going to fuck. If we invade America, Ninja's going to quick scrap the fuck out of us. We got to get rid of him first. All right, so then you start training all your Chinese soldiers to, if you see any cunt with blue hair, shoot on sight, which I'm actually not against. I think that any time you see anyone with blue hair, shot on sight, you know, that'll get rid of Ninja, that'll get, that'll get rid of all of these fucking annoying YouTubers, those daily vloggers, and, you know, it'll get rid of a lot of annoying feminists with armpit hair. I think that's a win-win for the whole world, you know? Sure, we get invaded by China, 
and then all of a sudden we go from uh, work, uh, you know, having rights to uh, being paid in fumes and our only employee benefit is suicide nets, but we wouldn't have to deal with chicks trying to tell us that armpit hair isn't gross. So I think that's a win, you know? You, you, you know, you, you gotta you gotta give a lot of credit to China. Yes, they have forced labor camps. Yes, they're essentially replicating the Holocaust, but on the Uyghurs, okay? But do they have any annoying feminists with blogs? No. Now, that's not exactly a good trade-off. It's not exactly a good scenario when you look at it holistically. But you can't honestly tell me that that's not a big plus. <laughs> what am I talking about? Oh, TikTok is banned, okay? It's done. It's over. And uh, so Donald Trump, he came out and he said he's on his fucking fighter jet. Why the fuck do they let journalists on the plane with Trump? If I'm Trump, I would be like, look, can I, like, no one likes traveling, Okay, but imagine if you had to travel in a plane with 30 cunts who are employed to annoy you, you know, as every journalist should be doing. They should be annoying to the president or whoever's in charge. They should be asking the questions they don't want to answer. That's their job, right? But why the fuck does the the leader of the world have to deal with these annoying people when he's traveling? Like, can't he have a minute to sit on the plane and be like, oh, I can't wait to enjoy these nuts? These salted nuts, and then some cunt goes, uh, Mr. Trump, what are you going to do about TikTok? Oh, fuck, are you kidding me? I'm getting rid of it. Go away. So he's doing interviews or some shit on his fucking plane, and uh, he goes, I'm getting rid of TikTok. It's done. It's Chinese spyware. We're getting rid of it. Um, and uh, I, I think, look, here's what I think will and should happen. I think that TikTok just can't be trusted. I think that any of these massive Chinese owned businesses, tech companies, the new warfare is, is not like outright killing and, and shit. That's just unfeasible because even if America stops being such a fucking superpower at the end of the day, everyone's got nukes. If you invade, everyone dies. So there's really not going to be, like full on conflict. At least I fucking hope there's not. But the new war is just winning economically. And that the way you do that is with information. So all these fucking Chinese businesses, and don't get me wrong, I can guarantee you we are doing the same shit over there. That's why they restrict the fuck out of all of our businesses. You know, in China, you can't really do well if you're an American business because they fucking know what we're doing. It's what they're doing. That's how this shit works, right? We know all these countries are just interfering with each other. That's why I reckon that that Trump didn't uh, chuck a hissy fit over those, um, uh, what was that thing of like uh, that bounty going around about American soldiers? Because I reckon for sure they were doing that shit too. That's how a proxy war works. You fucking chuck your soldiers into some Middle Eastern country, turn it into a fucking shithole, fund the guys that are against the guys that you want to go to war with but can't because they'll nuke you, and then you go, oh, we're not at war with Russia. These guys are. They're just fighting for their freedom and we're helping. And then, that, and then that's how it fucking works. And at the end of the day, all these people in these Middle Eastern countries, their whole country is absolutely fucked. We take all of their resources, rape their land and their women and leave. And we go, aha, we got fucking 60% of the oil and Russia only got 40%. And then all these cunts are sitting there going, my children are dead. I hate America. And then we go, why? Are you a bloody terrorist? <laughs> Stop being a terrorist. We're fighting for your freedom. Give me your shit. That's how that's that's how uh, global economics works, guys. Uh, that that was the Spearhead Sunday's uh, explanation of um, geopolitical global conflicts uh, and how the war for oil started, and also uh, what uh, how terrorism starts. And that, guys, is one hundred percent true. Uh, the sources that I've used. 
uh, don't exist because I probably read them many years ago, many weeks ago, saw tweets about it, accepted it as true, uh, put it in my brain, and then I'm spitting it out to you. And ultimately, while I do have no sources and I cannot verify anything I just said, you have to admit, it sounds true. And that's good enough. <laughs> Isn't that good enough for everyone? That's how the world operates now. It's not about fucking verifying your sources going, oh, I want that to be true. So it is. Hang on, I've got to plug in my laptop here. Um, you know, some cunt's job uh, is to cut this podcast up into clips. How are you going to clip this one, huh? I make everyone's job so difficult. Yeah, so just take every topic that I talk about and cut it into a clip. And I was like, yeah, but you yelled about 16,000 different things in the first 15 minutes of the podcast. I don't know how to clip that. Well, hey, man, uh, that's the that's your problem, isn't it? It's actually my problem because I have to fucking explain to him what I meant to say and I didn't mean to say anything. Guys, uh, TikTok, all right? So TikTok's, TikTok is getting banned, uh, or, or at least Trump says. Um, he goes, uh, yeah, I'm banning it. He's, okay, so here's what I think should happen. So obviously they're, they're banning it because of the security concerns, which I think are totally legitimate. You can't trust any of these massive Chinese companies. They're, they're, it's, they're just trying to fuck with uh, the, their enemy, as I'm sure we are to them. Um, and giving uh, this amount of, like the amount of information that these social media apps track, and I'm totally aware that that Facebook and all this kind of shit, they also trap that. But let's be real, okay? My overarching opinion is these companies shouldn't be able to know this much about us. It's fucking creepy and it's bad, but ultimately that's our fault for not fighting for more privacy and trying to charge these businesses for using our information. Maybe that will change as social media and the internet evolves. But uh, for the for the minute, we've just given it to them freely. And uh, this is the, the world that we live in, right? So I think the amount of data collection that goes on is fucking crazy. I mean, even just me as, as a, an influencer, the amount of information that I am able to find out about the people that watch my shit is crazy. I know... Uh, all of your ages. I know where the fuck you live roughly, not specifically, but I know the suburbs. Um, and that's just that's just the the little tiny tools that I'm given access to as a baby influencer. You imagine the fucking back end that that Facebook and all these companies have before they give me a incredibly watered down version of what they see. It must be insane. So all of these companies know everything about you. That being said, uh, who would you rather, who do you trust more with all of this fucking information? Do you trust America or do you trust the Chinese dictatorship who view you as an enemy? It's a very obvious choice. So I think, uh, yeah, you can't trust any of these companies and something needs to be done. Um, I think what should happen and what probably will happen is... Trump will be like, I'm banning TikTok and uh, TikTok or I don't know, Tencent or Douyin or whatever fucking company owns the American TikTok because there's Chinese TikTok, which is called Douyin, and then there's TikTok, which is uh, American and Australian, the Western world TikTok, right? So this, so Trump's going to go, look, I'm going to make your fucking app illegal. And then in comes Microsoft. They're already talking to this company and they go, hey guys, so your company's going to become illegal uh, and you won't be able to operate it because you're Chinese. So either you let TikTok become banned and illegal or, and you make nothing, you lose everything and all of the money you've invested into it, you've just fucking burn it in a hole, or you sell the entire thing to us. Uh, and if you're the Chinese company, that's a, also a no brainer. It's like either it gets banned and I make nothing or I sell it to Microsoft, I make some money. I lose it, but I make fucking, I don't know, billions, I assume. Uh, so I think that's what's going to happen. Um, that being said, I think that uh, it should. I, I think that's uh, that's the worst case scenario for society. Okay, because we do need to um, get rid of TikTok because it's destroying the earth. Uh, and my my exhibit, uh, uh, my my evidence for this is, of course, because this is Speared Sunnies, completely anecdotal, and uh, it's based off this one tweet. 
So obviously all these TikTok influencers are losing their fucking minds, freaking out because this is the literally the end times for them and their career. I have this tweet that I found uh, from a TikTok fan that has 3.7 thousand retweets and this is uh, supposed to be all of the reasons why you shouldn't ban TikTok. It's actually an open letter to Donald Trump and it's all of the reasons why you should not ban TikTok. But if you read it, uh, it would honestly... Any reasonable per- person would read this and go, oh, we absolutely must ban it. This is destroying everyone. Okay, so I'm going to read this letter. This is why we shouldn't ban TikTok. Donald Trump, can I explain to you, imagine Trump reading this, like sitting down in his fucking fighter jet while the country's burning, all these protests are going nuts, everyone's dropping dead from a deadly disease he did nothing about, and then this, and then he's sitting on Twitter reading this fucking letter written by some some girl who likes to watch TikTok on the toilet. Donald Trump, can I explain to you what banning TikTok will be doing to millions of people? Good, because I'm gonna anyways. Oh, sassy, got him. There are teenagers, children, and young adults who have become more comfortable with themselves and who they are, who they love, etc. Taking this away would be setting America back. No, it wouldn't. If we took TikTok away, we would have flying cars. I guarantee it. Back to where we are having a spike in the number of suicides in the LGBTQ plus community. It's not worth it. Is okay. Can you honestly tell me that there is a trans person sitting there who is like they're just staring at the fucking noose that's attached to the to the beams of their roof in the attic, and they're sitting there, and then they go, "You, oh, you know what? Actually." Uh, I actually saw fucking Charlie D'Amelio do the renegade yesterday, so I don't. I'm not going to neck myself today, right? Because if I if I top myself, I'm going to miss out on all of these fucking teens dancing without moving their legs. That's another thing with TikTok. You know, I n- never would I have thought that I would be impressed by a bunch of cunts dancing without moving their legs because it's filmed vertically. You can't move. You can only dance from the waist up. The only cunts I want to see dancing from the waist up is people stuck in wheelchairs because they got into a car accident and they're dancing anyway. That's the only people I'm going to be impressed by. you got to feel sorry for the paraplegics of today, you know? Like, finally, an app for them. Finally, an app where they can thrive, where they can dance without moving, just from the waist up. And all of these fucking privileged white girls start doing the renegade and take it away from them. You, you will be taking away millions of people's coping mechanisms. What about the nurses who deal with COVID all day at work and just want to cry, but TikTok helps them laugh, smile, and go home with a positive attitude? Yeah, look, I lost 80 people over 70 today, but I saw someone do a fucking TikTok dance, so now I'm happy again. That doesn't happen. This, this letter reads like a, like some kind who has never left their house. Like this letter is why we should ban TikTok because just from this person scrolling through that fucking app, this is how she think the, thinks the world works and it doesn't. We need to get rid of this app. It's literally corrupting people and giving them a false sense of reality. You reckon some nurse who's just fucking performed open heart surgery and the patient died anyway due to, through no fault of their own and then they go, oh, no. I lost, a, I lost a young mother. She had an unborn child inside her and she died during open heart, heart surgery. Very unlikely, I know, but this is the scenario that, I've, that I'm running with in my head. Oh, this is terrible. I know what will make me feel better. <laughs> Charlie D'Amelio sticking her tongue out. You'll be taking away the coping mechanisms for millions of people. Good! Take away their coping mechanism. Get these cunts into the real world. If your coping mechanism is scrolling through teenagers shaking their asses, you've got an issue. And it's not what you thought you were dealing with. This app has saved so many people's lives. Being able to know someone is going through something like what you're going through is a lot of help. TikTok has helped so many people throughout this quarantine and taking it away would be a huge mistake. Dude, reading that, taking away TikTok would be a massive service to humanity. I don't know, man. I you, On a serious note, it's... um. 
Man, it's uh, it's it is a shame because it was it's. I don't. I think what will happen is an American company will buy it and then it and then it'll be fine. I think that. Uh, and and also let's be let's be real. As much as I've said that you know you can't trust the Chinese government and it needs to be banned because of data privacy and they they're using it for nefarious means, which we know they are, and that's the reason Trump's saying that he's going to ban it. Let's be fucking real. If they didn't mess. With his rally, do you really think it would have been banned? It would have been banned six months ago if uh, if it was for the reasons he's saying it's being banned, okay? That's not why, okay? All of these fucking kids on TikTok, they fuck with the Trump rally, and that's great. I love that. I thought that was hilarious. I think that was just A-grade trolling on a massive scale, is getting everyone to sign up to attend a Trump rally, claim all the free tickets, and then no one shows up. Hilarious. That would have been funny if it happened to Trump. Would have been funny if it happened to Biden. Would have been funny if it happened to fucking Beyonce. Amazing trolling. I love it, okay? Now, uh, but also, let's be fucking real. That's why he's banning it, okay? Because they fucked with him. And that's just the type of guy he is. He's like, oh, whatever. I don't care about this fucking app. Oh, hang on. They, they embarrassed me. Get rid of it. Although, you know, he did, he did say that, the, that uh, the Chinese government is using all of this information and all of these, all of these uh, outside influences are trying to influence the American election. And then the minute he holds a rally, I mean, yeah, he's not wrong. China would have seen that and been like, oh, fucking great. Our app's working perfectly. It's sowing chaos and disunity in our number one enemy that we can't beat with guns, so we have to beat uh, essentially spiritually. This is great. Everyone's fighting, working perfectly. Meanwhile, if someone posts a fucking dance on Douyin about how the Chinese government sucks, they disappear, don't they? You won't see them on Wednesday. They're fucking gone. It sucks, though, man, for all these all these like influence because there's some like genuinely really funny people and, and and it's like the it seems to be with a whole new generation of, of social media influencers and I'm not just talking like cunts of the dance I'm talking like funny people like there's this kid uh Blake Pavey on uh, on TikTok he's blowing up he's got like a quarter million or something last I checked he's real funny he's blowing up he's next up for sure and that's through TikTok and it sucks for for those kids who are just starting out uh and growing these huge audiences uh to have that potentially taken away from them but it goes back to what I've been saying, man. You cannot trust any of these social media companies at all. You know, that's why I'm on all of them. That's why when TikTok started up and blowing up, I got on it and started putting my shit on there. I got 40,000 people on there. That would suck to lose all those people because they're all new. Like like most of you guys listening to this shit, uh, most of my existing fans aren't or were not on TikTok. They're getting on there now, but that's 40,000 new people I got to say, I reckon like 35,000 of them had never seen me before. It's all of the the next gen of, of young Australians that will grow up and will be able to come to a show and enjoy my shit. Um, it would suck to lose all those people. Um, but it goes back to what I'm saying, man. You've got to be on everything. If you're in this game, you can't trust any of these fucking social media platforms. I mean, look at Ninja. He went over to Mixer. It fucking died. They spent, a, they spent billions of dollars and it fucking died, you know? So uh, you just can't trust any of these fucking things. That's why I'm on everything. And that's why, for me, the ultimate number one is, like, uh, shows. Because it doesn't matter if I get banned from fucking everything, for being a little bit too edgy, for being a little bit too funny. If I get banned from fucking everything, at the end of the day, they cannot stop me from doing a show because that's real. Um, and that's why I value that shit so much. And that's why I value the fucking connection I have with my audience so much because I do know that, you know, if for, for whatever fucking reason I get booted off YouTube, you guys will jump over to the next thing that I'm focusing on. So um, you, you, if you're in this shit, man, you really got to spread your fans across all of them because uh, you can't trust any of these platforms. And it's like, you know, if you, you're trusting that they'll never change their terms of service, you're trusting that they'll never go bankrupt. You're trusting that Donald Trump won't just sign an executive order one day banning Twitter because of a hashtag, you know, it's, it's all possible. Um, so you've got to be everywhere, man. If, uh, I don't know if any fucking TikTok cunts are listening to this, but we'll see. Um, I'm going to get, uh, into, into some other stuff now, but, uh, huge news. For Speared Sundays, guys, it's been a long time coming. This hasn't this hasn't happened 
for fucking ages, okay, guys? And and I think from all of the shit, from, from the previous 29 minutes of yelling about the world and saying fuck jokes and all of the words that have been coming out of my mouth into your brains, I think we all know why this hasn't happened for so long despite the relative size of this podcast in Australia, right? Quite a large podcast, you know, in the scheme of, of things, in, in Australian podcasts, over 200 episodes, I've... I'm pretty sure I've had, I might be wrong, I think I've had one sponsor. <laughs> one sponsor ever. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited to announce today we're doubling that number. Welcome to welcome to the welcome to the show. Manscaped, sponsoring the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Fucking your balls will thank you. How fitting for the Spearhead Sundays podcast to be sponsored by a nut shaver. That's great. Guys, uh, I need to pull up the copy here. Oh no, is my laptop tight? Ah, oh, fucking... How fucking typical, huh? That That is the most spearhead Sunday shit ever. Guys, it's been about an hour since I... The last thing I said. That's going to be the most spearhead Sunday shit ever. The minute I get the first sponsor in fucking years, my whole recording equipment dies. Laptop turns off. Fucking won't charge for like two hours. Whatever. We're back here, guys. All right. The, the, apparently the world doesn't want me to do well. Finally get a sponsor. Manscaped. Sponsor the show. Manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS, right? But uh, I guess they don't want me to do well. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm angry, but we're doing an angry read. Guys, Manscaped have sponsored the show. And uh, they're a really cool brand. Uh, they are for shaving your nuts, okay? Ladies, don't worry. You can also shave your pussy. Uh, and y the best thing about this is uh, they've said we're not a conservative brand, so we encourage the host to go to it. So that's that's good that, um, you know, they're, they're a very uh, uh, loose brand. I mean, if, you, if, you're, if your brand is uh, nuts, you really need to fucking go for it, don't you? All right, so I'm going to do the sponsored read and you guys are going to support uh, the brand because that's how we get this fucking real shit out there. That's how we fund everything is if you guys support the brands that support us, that's how we keep this shit running. All right, so <clears throat> that, that being said, all right, Manscaped is, is an American brand and they're just launching in Australia. So their ad copy seems to be clearly written by an American uh, and it's meant to sound like an Australian. Now, I'm not going to lie, they've gotten that wrong, okay? The quality of their Australian lingo, quite low. The quality of their electric shaver, very high. Uh, but I'm going to read what they've told me to read and I'm going to do my best uh, to make it sound very Australian as they've tried to. <clears throat> Mate. When's the last time you've shaved that quarantine bush in your pants? <laughs> Look, they haven't done a very good job nailing the Australian accent or the Australian language, but they've, they're trying their best, and that's what we want from Manscaped. They're trying their best, and we can appreciate that. Mate, when's the last time you shaved that quarantine bush in your pants? Support for Speared Sundays is brought to you by Manscaped, who's the best in men's below-the-belt grooming. Manscape offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. I mean, that rhymes. That's pretty good. Uh, but Manscaped has just launched in Australia. We've gone years without using the right tools for the job. And now you can be one of the first to experience their life-changing products here in Australia. Do not read. Host talk about a time when he's hurt his balls while manscaping or a funny manscape. Dude, that shit's actually happened to me. A lot, because I, I recently, not recently, like a few, like a few years back, because you know you do this, you do the manual shaver, and that's a that's a one and done thing. You never like after you shave your nuts with a with like a, a razor thing, you, that's horrific. Never do that. Okay, it looks great the first five minutes, and then the rest, the next three months is hell between your legs. It's just like you've your nuts have gone from being quite comfortable, albeit hairy. Uh, they, you know, day one, they look great, nice and smooth, and then for the next three months, it's like you've just replaced your nuts with a fucking cactus. It's fucked, sweaty, spiky, it's not good. So I was like, oh, I'll get an electric shaver i went down to this fucking store i spent like i spent a few hundred dollars on like a what i thought was a good electric razor and then it does the the, the it does the top bit fine and it does my face fine 
But your ball bag, it gets caught and it's fucking painful. And uh, that's what, and then I talked to all my friends. I was like, is that normal for the electric runs? And they go, yeah, that's normal. You just got to be careful. But there is no real way to be careful. So and, and what I ended up with was like the top part of it. You know, I'm looking like action man at the top. But then my nut sag, it, it just was, basically it just was like a, my dick had a beard, you know. It was like balding on top, had a beard down the bottom. It was not good. But I got this from Manscaped, and this is fucking true. Dude, no nicks, okay? I have uh, some very aesthetic-looking nuts. No nicks. It's been a couple of days since I used it as well. None of that fucking feeling like I've got a cactus for nuts. No spiky bullshit, no ingrowns, nothing. So this... uh, Works awesome, and I recommend it. Now, ladies, uh, I don't have a pussy, um, but I would assume this isn't going to chop your lips up either. Okay, if it's gonna if it's gonna leave my ball bag nice and safe, I, I would imagine the labia is fine as well. Okay, and you girls can use this. Too. Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer. The Manscaped engineering team spent eighteen months perfecting the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created, and they've just released their new and improved lawnmower 3.0. That's what I've got here. Oh, it's got a light. I, how, did I, how did I fucking not notice the light? when I was, Oh, because I was using it like that. It's got a light too for vision. That's good. Fuck yeah. It's got a fucking... Dude, it's got a fucking scope on this shit. I've got a scope to shave my nuts properly. Next thing you know, there's going to be a fucking silencer and, and, and recoil reduction thing I can add on the top of it. That's sweet. Um, it's got a 7,000 RPM rotor with quiet stroke technology. Quiet stroke. That's when you're having a wank, but your parents are home. (laughs) Guys, manscaped.com, use code SPEARS, all right? Because there's not going to be very many brands that will A, sponsor this show ever, and B, let me say shit like that when they have sponsored the show. At least I assume so. This might, you know, this might be a one and done. So let's fucking do this right. Let's support Manscaped. Use code SPEARS for 20% 20% off and free shipping. Your balls will thank you. That is manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS for free shipping and 20% off. They got a bunch of amazing stuff. They sent me like a real, a huge, a huge fucking care package. Like honestly, in Australia, brands really don't get how to do this shit right. And Manscaped have, they sent me a whole bunch of products, which I'll take a look at in maybe a future episode as well after I've used them. Underwear, t-shirt, fucking all of these like, grooming things really really cool stuff um and the the shaver i have used and it's it works like great and i had uh, what i thought was a really good shaver that i spent way more money on than what it costs to get one of these and this is fucking way better so uh, man support manscape they're supporting spearhead sundays and that's how we can continue, continue to do this shit continue to do that real shit that you guys like and it also keeps us going throughout you know quarantine uh when we can't do shows and everything so uh, manscape.com use code spears 20 percent off with free shipping i highly recommend them i've literally used them you know me i don't promote shit that i don't like myself so manscape.com use code spears all right god damn I was on such a roll for that first half hour, man, and then, then that shit happened and it fucking rocked me. Now what? Now oh, that's right. Now what did happen while I was fucking screaming at my laptop? Uh, why aren't you working? You're so expensive. Uh, what did happen is, uh, man, called it. Clairvoyant Spears at it once again. Coronavirus, the the coronavirus clairvoyant. Stage, uh, a state of uh, disaster has been declared in Australia and uh, there's now a curfew in this country. The masks haven't been working. Or, well, I guess the masks have been working, but no cunt is fucking uh, following the rules. So I read that... um, Obviously, lots and lots of testing is being done and we're finding way more cases. But when you get tested or when you obviously when you're found positive, you're obviously supposed to quarantine yourself. And uh, the police have started doing random door knockings just to make sure that the people who have this shit are staying home. This is why I said, if you can stay the fuck home, because you cannot trust some of these fucking dickheads out there so the the cops have been doing random door knockings just to check the people who are supposed to be quarantined and quarantining and they found that one quarter 
of the people who literally have the disease were not home. And they knew they had it. And they were just out doing shit when they're supposed to be quarantining. And, like, that is so fucking... I don't know. I don't even know what to say about that. That's so fucking disrespectful that you, knowing you have a fucking disease, you can't stay home for two weeks to literally save the lives of everyone's grandparents. You know what I mean? Like, I couldn't imagine being the type of person to to leave the house. Like, fair enough if you if you are asymptomatic and you don't know you have it, but testing positive and then leaving the house, like fucking I don't know what to do with those people because they don't clearly don't give a fuck that's insane to me how disrespectful to everyone in this country that is and that that's the shit that just prolongs this even more so we just copped another six fucking weeks of quarantine um till September 6 here in Melbourne uh and uh you know Sydney Brisbane this is your future you guys are fucking next uh, especially Sydney. Um, so yeehaw guys. I don't know, dude, I don't know when these live shows are coming back. Uh, that's that dude. That's why I was so stoked when Manscaped came along because I mean, previously this online shit, I, I, I barely break even on to borderline lose money on. Uh, but the, but that made it all worth it because the shows would be where I I made my money and, and obviously that's the goal to, to see to, and perform for you guys and also to fucking, you know, pay the bills as well. And then all of a sudden the show's gone, whole tour cancelled uh, and it looks like I won't be doing another tour uh, a year from when I was supposed to do this tour. So it's put me in a position to to really hustle with the online thing. So it's, it's you know, I'm not in fucking danger, but that's why I'm so grateful to the Patreon supporters and the people who, like at Manscaped and the people who fucking support uh, the brands that support us. So literally, if you need a shaver, please get it from Nan- Manscaped. One, supports me. Two, it's actually better than the shit that you're going to get at those fucking shaver shops because they're not, they don't have to pay rent. Um, but yeah, man, it's fucking scary times, dude. It's, uh, I, I feel, uh, I hope everyone's looking after their mental health. Um, I hope everyone's uh, trying to stay sane, trying to stay fit. Things that have been really helping me because I've been going crazy a little bit because, uh, I don't know. It's weird, man. Like with this, with me having the shows, my, the, the amount of work that I would put in online, uh, would always be like, uh, I don't know about would always, it, it, it would always have an obvious payoff, like a tangible payoff. Do you know what I mean? Because numbers on a screen are, uh, amazing obviously, but like, it's not, it's not as, uh, so like, you know, I hit 30,000 subscribers last month. That's a fucking incredible. But to me, what's more special than that is only like 300 people in a room. It's it's more tangible. It's like more real in my brain. So I've been going a little bit crazy not having that tangible uh, reflection of my work. Do you know what I mean? Whereas now it's just like screaming out in the fucking void uh, uploading videos and, uh, people go, I liked it. And they give me a thumbs up and I'm like, ah, fuck it. Is that real? (laughs) It's, it's strange for me. So I'm trying to look after myself. Uh, having the dumbbell thing was such a godsend. I'm happy that I did that. Uh, it gives me something to like struggle and build and work towards and do every day. Um, but other than that, man, I'm just trying to trust, trying to look after myself, walk, leave the house as, as often and, and is as well, not as often as, as, uh, as safely as possible. So I go for a walk in the morning every day. Um, I think that's really important. Uh, and I don't go near any fucking dude. They need to shut down shopping centers. Hey, like that's like, keep the supermarkets, keep all the food shit open, but Hey, you don't need to go to Pandora, huh? You don't need to go to pay. You don't need to buy a t-shirt from JJ's today. All right. You don't get it online. Stay the fuck home. It's, it's so weird to me that the biggest shopping center in the Southern hemisphere is still open. Especially after all those stats came out that cunts were going, getting tested at near the shopping center 
and then going straight into the fucking center before they got their results. Oh, I'm sick. I might have COVID. I better get tested. Ah, oh, while I'm here, I might as well give it to every cunt in the food court. It's crazy that that's open. That seems, that seems wild to me. Um, I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know when these fucking shows are going to come back. Or I think I, uh, I th uh, all I can hope for is the, these nerds figure out a fucking vaccine and uh, everyone does as they're told. But um, look, man, whatever. Uh, I'm trying to keep my head up. I hope you guys are doing all right. I hope you guys are engaging with your hobbies and looking after your mental health and staying healthy as well. Because uh, we're going to be, it looks like this shit is not going to be done by June next year. I'll fucking say that much. All right. With that out of the way, let's get into the miscellaneous bit at the end of the podcast. Are you kidding? Temporary error. I think I'm going to throw my computer into the fucking sun. <laughs> Fuck me, bro. What's... Let me look at it on my phone. If you would like to send in an email to the podcast, yeah, here we go. Send it to podcast at loosespears.com. Um, and uh, if you have a funny story, if you need some life advice, whatever you want, I will uh, answer it to the best of my ability. Where are we? All right. Hey, Lewis, love your stuff. I can't wait for the new special to come out someday. Me neither, bro. That's why I got this red rose on my fucking YouTube's figure. That was supposed to be the special, but I guess not, man. Um, that's all right, though. Keep your head up. It's all about that positive lifestyle. It's all about hustling, alpha energy, scamming people, drop shipping, taking advantage of cunts, exploiting child labor. That's alpha energy. Hey, Lewis, love your shit. Can't wait for the new spell, blah, blah, blah. Call me. My name is Kevin. Um, anyway, four years ago, I was a fresh college student uh, wanting to make friends. So when this guy called Kyle asked me for the homework, I gave it to him. Ooh. Yeah, you don't want to do that first, like your first interaction, because then then forever you're just like, the oh, that's the kind of who does my homework. This email, by the way, is I want my friend, in quotation marks, to fuck off out of my life. I started realizing that he wouldn't stop asking me for homework in the second year, so from halfway, halfway into that year, I started to say no to him. He failed a project and multiple subjects because of it. But then Kyle found some Vietnamese guy who gave him his password to get the homework. Out of pity, I asked the Vietnamese guy if he had changed his password when the email said to change your password every year. And he did. The third or fourth year, he constantly contacted me on WhatsApp for my documents and such because he needed it. God, those cunts are annoying. That, 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 I've never been to uni. I did, I did TAFE for a little bit. Um... But fuck those cunts in group projects that do nothing must be the most annoying people on planet Earth. Uh, that being said, I almost definitely, oh, I wouldn't have been one of those people. If I was in a course I cared about, because that's ultimately that's what those people are, is they're in a course that they don't give a fuck about because they feel like they should be at university because that's what the world thinks and that's what their parents told them that they probably should be doing. Uh, and, and then they end up in some fucking thing they don't care about, they don't learn anything, they leech off everybody who does give a fuck about it and uh, they bring the whole world down into disrepute. And then they get tested and found positive for coronavirus and they go to a fucking shopping center and kill someone's grandma instead of themselves. How selfish. Um, he went to the, the third and fourth year. He kept contacting me for documents because he needed it. He went to the same graduation company as me and he told me it was purely because I went there. The problem here is that I want to go to university, but he also goes to university and with the exact same program. I don't want to have the same friends as him because then I'm stuck with him for another three years. Even though I say no multiple times when he asks about my documents, he won't give up. His thesis has been rejected twice and he has one strike left. I hope he doesn't make it, but even then I'm stuck with him. He has absolutely never done anything for me, so I don't care if he doesn't make it to the next stage. Knowing him, he'll slither his way into my life and friendships again because I can't be a dick in front of people who don't know him. How can I make him fuck off out of my life? Hmm. By the way, I've had laser eye surgery and it hurts like hell. 
but I'd do it all again if it means not listening to Miss Lee's bit at the end again. Um, yeah, right. So, uh, I mean, I don't know, man. There's not much more you can do other than saying, hey, uh, the next time he asks you, you just have to say, hey, firstly, I'm not helping you with this thing, but also never ask me again. My answer will be no. Uh, I don't think it's worth snitching on the cunt or anything like that. Uh, I just think that, yeah, you just, need, you just need to go, hey, man, I want you to know that I will never help you, so don't even bother asking. I will never, ever help you. I've helped you this many times and you don't learn anything, so I will not help you ever again. Please don't ask me. Do you understand? You just need to do that shit. Um and then he'll say yes. And then and then if he keeps asking you, I mean, I don't know how bad this is. It sounds like he's not harassing you. It sounds like he's just annoying. So I would just say, stop asking me, stop asking me, never ask me again. And if I mean, if he really does keep pestering you, it might be worth going to a, the lecturer and saying, hey, this guy keeps fucking asking me. It's really annoying. Can you tell him not to? I don't want him to get in trouble, but can you just say, do your own homework, please. It's really annoying. Um, it depends how annoying it is. If, if it's like getting in the way of your study and your future, then it's it might be worth saying something. Um, but if that's going to like destroy his future, it's probably not even worth bothering with having that on your fucking conscience. I would just say the next time he asks you, say no for this one and say, I want you to know that I will never help you. Never ask me again. Do you understand? Please don't ask me. I will say no. Uh, And then if he asks you again, just go, look, if you ask me again, I told you no. If you ask me again, I'm going to the lecturer to tell you that you keep asking me to do your homework for me and he will tell you not to. And then it's your, then it's his choice. And then if he does it again, then it's totally fine for you to go to the lecturer and go, look, this cunt won't stop fucking annoying me. It's getting in the way of my study. Can you please tell him to do his own shit? Uh, That, that would be my advice anyway. What else do we have here? Um, all right. Um, uh, here we go. <laughs> Clogged my work toilet with my wallet. Great. Love this. Bit of vandalism. Uh, hey, Lewis. want to start off by saying you've made yourself... Uh, what you've made of yourself and your ongoing determination and optimism is, is an inspiration. Thank you very much. Uh, I have respect and pride, blah, blah, blah. blah. Suck my dick. I appreciate that, bro. Thank you very much. That's uh, very cool. Um, I'd been working at Mitre 10 for just over a week when all of this went down, or rather didn't go down. There was about a th- there was about 30 minutes before lunch break. I'm paranoid. I'm just- Sorry, I'm just checking that my computer's not going to fucking turn off after that. I would have I would have literally lost it. You'd never see me again. I would have just gone, I've just run. You ever get so angry that you just want to fucking run somewhere? That would have been me. Uh, There was about 30 minutes before lunch break and considering my urgency, I figured it could be uh, an in and out before anyone noticed thing. I told my manager that I had to go to the toilet and I'll be back in five minutes. To my horror, he said the men's toilet is being repaired from a burst sink pipe and I'll have to use the one across the road and I really should wait until lunch anyway. I thought, fuck this cunt. I don't want to shit myself in aisle three. Dude, that's like insane. Like, imagine, like, that's some primary school shit. That's what I fucking hated so much about working in the call center was you had to do shit like log your shits. You had to type into the fucking system personal time and and they had a limited amount of personal. It's like, hey, Karen, if I need to shit, it might take five minutes and that's fine. Literally one time I got back from the toilet and they were like, oh, you took a minute 30 here. What was going on there? I was like, oh, I was doing a poo, Susan. I was pooing. Have you ever done a shit in in like what? If I got to walk from my desk to the toilet, that's minimum 40 seconds. I got to walk back. That's another 40 seconds. That's 80 seconds. What? Have you ever done a poo in 20 seconds, Susan? I don't think so. What, I would do quarter of a poo, pull my pants up without wiping and go back to my desk smelling like shit, do the rest in my in my seat? Is that what you want from me? I love that I left the call center eight years ago and I'm still angry about it. 
That's great. To my, uh, uh, anyway, however, I politely agreed and went off seemingly to get back to the work, but I actually went to the toilet. Love that. Uh, to see, I went to the toilet to see if maybe there would be a disabled toilet I could use. No, my only option now was the female toilet. We only have two female workers and the store was pretty empty. So I thought my chances were good. Oh, that's a big gamble, bro. You are a risk taker. I, you know what? I don't say, I can't say I approve, but I, I love the confidence. That's fucking that's alpha energy, you know, gambling on, on whether or not you can do a poo in the women's bathroom before one of your coworkers walk in. I mean, a wee, I could totally, I could get that done. In, out, no, none the wiser. A poo, that's a fucking gamble, dude. Um, I thought my chances were good. I made it to the toilets. I checked the coast is clear and get into a stall. Okay, step one, nailed it. I finish my poo and pull up my pants. As I twist around and flush the toilet, my wallet falls out of my pocket and into the bowl. Oh, no. Through the now broken pieces of shit. Oh, oh dude, your wallet has your ID in it. <laughs> so someone's going to go, oh, whose is this? Oh, I know who's exactly this is. One, you've clogged the toilet with your own wallet, bad enough too. It's in the women's. You're in big trouble, bro. Uh, the wallet went through the pieces of shit and I see it struggling against the pressure of the water before forcing its way down the pipe. I noticed the water didn't fill up again completely and knew it was blocked. I decided to leave the toilet and discuss this with my boss at lunch. I turn out from the toilet walker entrance and see a co-worker of mine. Oh no, so they saw you come out of the women's. Dude, that's not good. I smile politely and move on. I didn't even make it to lunchtime before some customer used the female toilet and told my manager the toilet was blocked. So we're now getting a plumber in to fix it and I'm worried they'll find my card and ID. That's what I said. And I know I've and know that I blocked the female toilet after I was told that I could not use it. Even if they don't find that, I'm sure my manager knows it was me or will at least check the cameras to confirm his suspicion. I don't think he's going to check the cameras to see because you're not going to see what happened. You're just going to see a woman walk in and then the toilet not walking. That's I don't think that's going to happen. The co-worker that saw me hasn't said anything to me, but casts a mischievous smile at me whenever we pass. I'm on edge that I might be let go considering on my, I'm on my two-week trial. Oh, bro, you're done. I hope you have a, a toilet-blocking shit one. Yeah, look, man, good luck, but also I think it's all over. <laughs> I, think, I think that it might be all over for you, but I want, I want the update. Hang in there. I want to hear about the disciplinary meeting. I want to hear if you got away with it. It all, you know what it is? It all hinges on the plumber. Here's what I would do. Oh, now, now this is a big gamble, but you are a gambling man. Now, option one, you just leave it and hope to God that nothing happens. Although if it's still clogged, they're going to pull the wallet out. That's undeniable. If it's clogged, they'll have to get the wallet out and then they see the ID and then you're done. Here's, here's your gamble, okay? Option one, you leave it, hope to God that nothing happens. Option two, when the plumber comes in to fix that toilet, you come clean to him because he doesn't work there. He's a contractor. You walk up to him and you go, hey, man, I work here. It's my two-week trial. I really need this job. Uh, I accidentally dropped my wallet in there while I was doing a poo. And then he'll go in the women's bathroom and you'll go, not relevant to the story. Please don't ask me about that. I'm going through a tough time. And then you go, if you find my wallet in there, can you please... Just return it to me and tell my boss it was clogged up with tampons or something because I really need this job. And you know what? Then it, then it's all up to the plumber. Uh, either he'll go, look, I can't do that, and you go, fair enough, and then you just accept your fate. Or he's a good cunt, and most, you know, most working class guys are. They're real people. You know, he's a plumber. I'm sure he's done heaps of weird shit. He'll go, yep, righto, no worries. I've got your back. And then you get your wallet back. The toilet gets fixed. No one's, no one needs to know. It's all good. That's what I do, man. Yeah, I reckon that's what I would do. I go to the plumber and I go, hey, dude, uh, come clean. It's my wallet. If you find it, 
Can you please return it to me and don't tell the boss? I really need this job. Because look, the situation isn't going to be helped by you getting fired by this, is it? It doesn't help the plumber. It doesn't fix the toilet. It doesn't make the boss happy. And you need the job. It's quarantine. I'm sure he will understand. That's what I would do. Go to the plumber. You either you either play it sweet and, and hope to God he doesn't find that wallet. Or you come clean to the plumber and say, if you find it, give it to me. And maybe have a $50 note in your, in your back pocket just in case. I mean, that. you know what? How about this? Say, look, if you find the wallet, I'll let you keep whatever's in it. Money, ID, debit card, poo, it's all yours. Just don't tell my boss. That's what I do. With that, I'm going to end it there. Thank you very much for listening to Spearhead Sundays. Um, uh, support the show by jumping onto manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping for a razor. Your balls will thank you. Uh, no joke, bro. These things are really, really good. I've literally used it and my nuts look immaculate and so could yours. Or perhaps your pussy, my lady. Um, and uh, for... Patreon supporters and people who would like to support the show are uh, starting next week. I'm going to be doing that extra half hour for Patreon supporters only of Spearhead Sunday. So uh, that's a thing that you can expect with next Sunday's episode because this Sunday I was a little bit too angry to do it. <laughs> all right, guys, thank you very much for listening. I hope you guys are doing all right. Stay home, wear a mask, be safe and have a shit one. Manscaped.com. Coat Spears.